From filmmaker Emmett Alston comes the 1980 New Year's slasher film that features a serial killer committing murders at the stroke of midnight in each respective time zone, starring Roz Kelly, Nip Keevan, and an incredibly freaky Stan Laurel mask. Let's take a look at New Year's Evil. <laughs> Year's Evil is one of the weirder slasher movies to emerge from the early 1980s. Not weird in that it's psychedelic or trippy or avant-garde or anything like that, but weird in that it's so damn entertaining, yet so under the radar of horror fans and the zeitgeist of horror in general. From the moment I first rented this film on VHS way back in the day to present day, New Year's Evil is a film that seems to be absent from most, if not all, horror discussions, slasher rankings, video essays, at least those that I've come across. I mean, unless you're explicitly looking for New Year's-based horror movies, you're liable to never see anything about this movie, unless you stumble across it accidentally, or already know about its existence. Or, to a weirder extent, you know somebody like me, who never stops recommending it to you until you watch it. Call me evil. Evil? You bad, I No. Just evil. During a New Year's Eve celebration in Los Angeles, a popular punk slash new wave DJ named Diane Sullivan, but better known as Blaze to her fans, receives a strange phone call during the late hour countdown celebration from a person calling himself evil and stating his intent to murder a quote, naughty girl when New Year's begins at the stroke of midnight during each respective time zone. And after initially believing the calls to just be joking in nature, bodies soon start showing up, and Blaze is soon believed to be the killer's final target. When these fears eventually become a reality, with Blaze herself being tied to an elevator and the killer revealing himself to actually be someone she knows, and is quite close with for that matter, I'll leave the reveal for those of you that haven't seen the movie yet. The film concludes with a Stan Laurel masked madman throwing himself from the top of a building after a standoff with the police. Blaze is rescued and loaded into the ambulance as the killer's body is splayed in the streets for all to see. But the driver of the ambulance is suspiciously adorned with that of the same unnerving Stan Laurel mask, a driver she definitely knows extremely well. <laughs> hey, brought your own music, huh? Yeah, I uh, always come well equipped. I bet you do. <laughs> New Year's Evil was pretty much panned by everybody upon its release, and the film didn't really go down well with horror fanatics of the day either. To this day, as I mentioned earlier, the film remains pretty obscure within the world of horror overall, and unfortunately has no real palpable legacy, and from what I've gathered, no growing cult fanbase like many of its slasher counterparts of that same era, which I think sort of sucks. The film is much better than the masses would have you believe, and I really can't believe how disliked this movie is by most of the people who have seen it. The other people have simply never heard of it. I hear these words and phrases used often by people describing the film. Boring. By the numbers. Unoriginal. Stupid. Just another slasher movie. And so on. And I have to disagree on almost every level. I mean, sure. The film isn't the best slasher movie ever made, and probably isn't anywhere near that level. But a bad movie? No. Boring? Absolutely not. Paint by numbers or the usual expected tropes? Not at all. ...is absolutely indescribable. A boiler factory would be a graveyard by comparison. New Year's Evil is a very good little slasher movie in and of itself. It has a great array of wacky, zany, wild characters that are built on the foundation of some very good acting, especially considering what type of film this is, the budget it had, and the extremely fast shooting schedule they were working with. 
the premise is also very different. And while yes, there is some guy committing acts of violence and murdering people, in a mask no less, it's not every day you get a California-based serial killer killing people in California at different midnights according to the different time zones. I mean, that's an interesting concept, albeit underutilized. A good idea for a remake would be to have these murders actually committed across the country in their own respective time zones, but that's a chat for another time. The acting is great, the story is different, the atmosphere and mood and vibe are absolutely on point, the soundtrack kicks fucking ass, the locations are great, New Year's Evil is just awesome, man. It is awesome. Underrated as hell, completely undeserving of the hate it gets, and definitely worth watching, even if just once. Is it a masterpiece? No. Is it the greatest slasher movie of all time? Even top 10? Eh, probably not. But how many slasher movies are? Standout performances would be Grant Kramer as Derek, Roz Kelly as Diane Blaze Sullivan, and the absolute badass of the movie himself, Kip Neven as Richard Sullivan, who is a standout of the movie and definitely a major highlight. My only two real gripes about the film are that, one, it should have been a bit longer, and two, we should have seen a lot more of the Stan Laurel mask. Because as much as the mask has been tied to the overall iconography of the film, the mask is actually barely in it. Which is a damn shame, because it is one of the freakiest masks ever put in a slasher movie. Emmett Alston's 1980 New Year's slasher movie, New Year's Evil, is most definitely worthy of a rewatch. <laughs> <laughs> 